I'm very progressive, and I like that. And uh, he has a lot of influence. I think he's getting older and he's doing it gracefully. The sensibility of the music should say everything. That's what rock and roll is all about. <laughs> you certainly play various roles, you know, transform from one uh, persona to the others. Uh, maybe before uh, being accepted by the sort so of institutionalized uh, approved. Yeah. You just move to the other, or you yourself getting tired of this role, or uh, you are not uh, stimulating it enough, you know, for this. So, so you move. What, what was the reason? Uh, several, several mm. factors. I, it, I was regarded as um, uh, quite bizarre outsider when I first started in music. In, uh, not so much in England, who um, they, they, uh, they, they feel comfortable with the eccentric, mm. um, but the Americans, I feel, have a tougher time with it. To exactly, they they have a need to put yes. it into some mm -hmm. kind of well. How do what how do I define it? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was working a lot with characters in, in the first sort of ten years of mm -hmm. what I was doing. Yes. And I would an album concept would revolve around one particular character, and then when I finished with that character, moved on to another album, I mm -hmm. would sort of evolve another character. Yes. Um, so I think it, I made. My music itself started to become more accessible because mm. uh, there were no, no more characters mm. and I was presenting myself as myself. On the other side of that, new music became more popular. The kind of music that I had been writing mm. um, was starting to be played by a lot of other bands all in, uh, in Japan and mm. in England and in Germany. Learn, you know, you were at your 15 years old when you were once a student of Zen Buddhism. And the second time you shaved off your head, is that true? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, and uh, like every other teenager right. that I knew, I was mm. experimenting and trying to find out about mm. other ways of living. Um, and uh, I, ha I felt a very strong empathy with uh, Buddhism because mm. of the nature of its um, transience. Yes. Um, the continual change of mm. things made quite good sense to me. And it, Maybe that it practice. made sense with the way I write it. Yes. And it all made it sense. Uh -huh. Yes, that's right. There is no permanence. Mm. There is nothing that is permanent. Mm. Everything is evolving yes, all the time. Evolving. And it, mm. it just felt right. Life is that, yes. Mm. It became less of a religion to me mm. as I grew older and just a, it became a point of reference. I still have a strong empathy with Buddhists mm. and Buddhism, mm. but not as a personal religion, yes, anything, I know. but as a, a statement of philosophy. Yes. Um, I still feel that that's the nearest philosophy mm. to the way I feel. Mm. Um, so it's a some, source of strength to... Yes, yes. I don't get source too disappointed energy, about yeah. things because uh -huh. I expect things yes. to go wrong and go right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Both. Yes. Yes. And things just do what they do. Right. And, Nothing and stays and eternal. You yeah. sort of steer a ship mm -hmm. across that course. Yeah. What kind of child were you, you know, being interested in Zen Buddhism like that? It's hmm. fascinating. Kind of um, precocious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, precocious and insular. Mm -hmm. um, I like I like to be the kid on the block that had found the new things first, and I would oh, always read books that were maybe two or three years too old yeah. for me. Oh, <laughs> Not understanding mm. half of them, but sort of mm. to get there first and to find these new inroads into things. So it was it was sort of a, a flirtation with intellectualism when I was mm. that young, oh, and I hope really? it steadied out oh. and just became a bit more rational after. That. I guess I was kind of quiet. Mm. I, I, again, I, I had...